So this is my letter. Dear Mom and Dad, I love you both very much. This inevitable conclusion to life, which uh, we all know is my narcissistic mother and my enabling codependent father are having troubles because of her violent combative dementia, her argumentative dementia. So uh, this inevitable conclusion to life is something one goes through. They'll know what I'm talking about. It means they're impending death, but also um, they keep wanting to move into assisted living and then they can't make up their minds, of course. And so I said, it's a process. It doesn't happen overnight. Fortunately, this gives one time, meaning a person can prepare. I'm prepared to help you as needed. Even though I don't communicate directly with Corky, I know she has offered the same. May is almost here, which means pool season. And speaking of mean, I put that in quotes. Mom, please stop being so mean. There, I said it. I sure do love you, but I love you most when you love dad most. Okay? Sending hugs and kisses. Kathy. So, so what I was saying is um, I'm sending this to them. And you might ask, well, you said you loved her. She's a narcissist and all those other videos that you made. You know, you're raging. Well, yeah. It's part of the healing, man. I couldn't love her. And now I can. I went to see her. She's pathetic. So the hurt and the pain have been replaced with righteous anger and zero tolerance for any toxic behavior I witness. So my sister, Corky, my sister, Jan are zero tolerance. I will not tolerate them. We have a bifurcation in the family. People see things completely different. The difference is those of us who haven't told the other people what to do, meaning myself and my brother, have been kind towards the two that have been mean. And I was uh, told by my own children that I was being bullied and bossed around by my two sisters. And I didn't see it because I had grown up in that narcissistic family structure and it had become normal. But I also said in this letter um, that I would, uh, I'm prepared to help you as needed. Well, there's a caveat there, which I don't need to say. They have dementia. You have to keep these letters simple. I will... I'm prepared to help them as needed as long as my needs are met, which I will not be sleeping there and, and witnessing their constant, my mother's two-hour verbal diatribe and attack on my dad and then reliving the trauma of my childhood and then witnessing him and his lack of masculinity and why I had this messed up uh, idea of relationships and my relationship with money. <laughs> and I'm healing. If it's an inside job, it's hard, it sucks, it's painful. But then you empower yourself. Okay. Anyway, this is modern art, which is really stupid. But now, this guy was German born. And of course, you know, he, he suffered because of the Holocaust. You know, constant, constantly being reminded here in the States. This is the Art Institute of Chicago. Appreciates your patronage. That's where this um, came from. It's a gift set. But this, these paintings, this abstract art by this artist, Gerard Richter, comes to the museum through a prior gift of Joseph Winterbottom and gift of the Lannan Foundation in 1997. And whatever that point I-68 means, you do realize that they had in modern art and they still have these appraisal scams in order to be able to write off a million dollars or whatever that canvas is appraised at. So here's the, how the scam works. It's great. A painter paints a painting and then they're paid a price for it. My point is this. You've got this art that's been created. The artist has been paid. Somebody purchases it. I guess that would be Joseph Winterbottom. Look into who he is. I'm sure he's a philanthropist. Winterbottom. <laughs> I love it. Uh, and then he gives it to the Lanan Foundation. 
as a gift. But first he has it appraised. So what I want to know is, what did he buy his art for? Meaning this one. What did he buy it for? How much? And how much was it appraised for? And then what was his tax write-off for giving it as a gift? Huh? Just asking. Just asking for a friend. That's all. So, okay, back to me. I'm healing, and I'm calling shit on out what it is. That's all. I'm calling a spade a spade. I see an obvious thing as an obvious thing, and I have zero tolerance. Zero tolerance. That's right.